understanding the blessedness of a revival. Part two. Two men that captured so mightily scriptural revivals to previous revivals. The first great awakening, the second great awakening, and so many other revivals like that. Made a statement, and I want to quote it. They are two young men, perhaps in their 40s, 50s, thereabout, but they have studied these revivals. They call their name Corey Russell and Billy Humphrey. And they said something that struck a chord in my spirit. And this is what they said When we mark everything as a revival, then nothing is a revival. Today, the word revival has become so common that I think it dampens our expectation. And I just hear the Spirit of God say, usually, it is after the revival that it is marked a revival. They couldn't call it the day of Pentecost till Pentecost came. Let me say it again and maybe it will strike a chord in you. When we mark everything as a revival, then nothing is a revival. I told you of how God broke loose in our midst in Rajoba days. It is looking back that we now say that is a revival. What then is a revival? So we can have the right perspective. We'll take two points because our time is far gone. One, a revival is a disruption that confronts, destroys, and prevails over every other God. In Acts chapter 19 verse 8 will be our text. We'll read from verse 8 to verse 20, but let me redefine it again. Please take out the scripture now and put the definition so it is clear for everyone. A revival is a disruption that confronts, destroys, and prevails over every other God. Whoever is behind there, please don't put God in big G. In Acts chapter 19, place the scripture now, verse 8. And he went into the synagogue and spake boldly. For the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. But when divers had hardened, when divers were hardened and believed not, but spake evil of that way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. And this continued for the space of two years so that all that dwelt in Asia heard the word of God, the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. That from his body were brought unto the sick, handkerchiefs and aprons, and diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, extortious, took upon them to call over them that had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preached. And there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirits answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overcame them, prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear came upon them all and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. 18. And many that believed came, confessed, showed their deeds. 
Many of them also used curious arts, brought their books, disruption. They brought them together, burnt them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word and the word prevailed. This talks about the worship of Diana, the goddess. The industry behind it was confronted, destroyed, and heaven prevailed. That is revival. Bringing it home, it is like the entirety of the industry behind casinos in Las Vegas shut down. That's revival. Don't tell me it's a revival without disruption. Until there is a shutdown, there is no revival. Number two, what is a revival? Quickly, a revival is a move of the Spirit of God that restores God's people. So we came here with an expectation of restoration. Because what happens in a revival is that the Spirit of God moves and people are restored from age long bondages. When revival hits, habits die. Age long bondages. Let me say it again and please place it or is there. A revival is a move of the Spirit of God that restores people. From age log bondages culminating in their supernatural change of story. Lift your hands where you are. Everyone that desires restoration, you are restored this hour. In Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 2 to 19, we don't have the time to read that. But Habakkuk began to pray, Lord, I have heard thy speech. And was afraid. Revive thy work, O Lord, in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known in wrath, remember mercy. Now jump to verse 17. Although the fig tree may not blossom, neither shall there be fruit in the vine. The labor of the olive may fail, and the fields may yield no meat. Yet the flock may be cut out of the stalls, and there may be no heads in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice. Why? Revival has come. I will joy in the God of my salvation. 19. The Lord God is my strength. And he will make my feet like hinds feet. And I'm ready for my high places. That's restoration. Can I have you scream? Restore Lord. Restore. Let me hear you scream again. Restore Lord. Restore. That's what the revival does. Because with waves of revival comes waves of transformation. Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17 down to 20. The Lord God in the midst of thee is mighty. That's revival. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love and he will joy over thee with singing. I will gather them that are sorrowful of the solemn assembly, which are of thee, to whom the reproach of it was a burden. Behold, at that time, I will undo. That's restoration. I will undo. That's restoration. I will undo all that. Have, that is, you are tied and then the rope is removed. I will undo all that afflict thee. And I will save her that halted and gather her that was driven out. And I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. 20 please. At that time. So it's talking about a particular time. And that time is the time of revival. At that time, I will bring you again. I will restore. Even at that time, I will gather you. For I will make you a name and a praise among all the people of the earth. And I will turn back your captivity before your eyes, said the Lord. Lift up your hands. In this wave of anticipated revival, may every case where you desire restoration, may you be restored in the name of Jesus. That's what revival is. A revival, how can you know when it occurs? Lord Jesus, help us. We take two ways. 
you know when a revival has occurred. So a revival is set to occur. Number one, when the heart of man begins to seek after God in genuine repentance. That's when a revival is said to occur. The heart of man begins to seek after God in genuine repentance. Jonah chapter 3, verse 5 to 8. Revival hit the land and everyone, including beasts, fasted, put ashes on themselves in genuine repentance. Oh, a revival will interrupt our culture. A revival will interrupt the program. A revival will interrupt the process. A revival will come as waves. You can't tell the next one. Genuine repentance. A time will come where people will flood this parking lot on non-service days in genuine repentance. In the days of Azusa Street Revival, a man visited Los Angeles and said, how can I find my way to where I hear this revival is taking place? Look at the description. They said, go, make a left. Make a right. And you will know when you get there. In other words, it was said that there was a visible magnetic pool. This man said he needed help to walk. The glory was heavy. No need for billboard. They said, well, you can't be shocked by electricity and ask, am I being shocked? You don't need an experience to know a revival. Even the LA Times was writing of the revival. Genuine. That, that, that is, you never point to a revival where people are not repenting before God. You know what many of us do when we come to church, when God is pointing at our hearts, we are repenting instead of repenting. No, Lord, that's not what it meant. And God said, I want you. Break your heart before me. Oh God, that's not what it meant. And God is saying repent. And you are repenting. When revival comes from priest to people, everyone is in ashes before God. Crying before God. Because if the Lord shall count iniquity, who shall stand? The man Evan Roberts, the Welsh Revival, 1904 to 1906. This man, this is about all the pictures you can find of Evan Roberts. Because he refused to take photographs. He said, it is not about me, it's about him. Now, can I shock you? It was at the end of the Welsh Revival, was the beginning of Azusa Street. I never knew it till I read it. It was said that it was like something catapulted from Europe to LA. Now, guess what? It was said that there was constant communication between the Azusa Street revival man and Evan Roberts. They were writing one another in the midst of Welsh revival. And it was like a button was passed from William Seymour, from Evan Roberts, different color. Different skin, different tone. Pass from one man, catapult a boom to another. Lord, wherever revival is taking place on this planet, we are ready. We are ready. It was like a catapult and it landed in Los Angeles. Go and read about William Seymour, you'll be shocked. Was he educated? No. It was a small congregation. After being kicked out from his original church, if God can use anyone, we are available, oh Lord. But it would take a heart that pants after God in genuine repentance. It was said about Evan Roberts, he went to Bible school. And in Bible school, what they were teaching him was not enough. He knew there was something more. And he would cry and groan and cry and groan. And according to the story, from time and time again, in the midst of class, what they were teaching is not what he was looking for. He will cry and fall on the ground. Without knowing he's already on the ground in the midst of class. It became like convulsion in the spirit. They call it groaning spirit. And so they called Evan Roberts, warned them, we don't do that here in Bible school, it's a decent place. 
He said, I cannot help myself. They said, this man must have a medical case. Look at who God used. The world thought was mental. And so they took him to check him up with medical science and guess the, the, the diagnosis. What did they say Evan Roberts had? They call it religious mania. That is this one. There is, there is nothing wrong with his system. But his spirit is groaning. The only definition we can give it as medical science is religious mania. And so they sent Eva Roberts home. Go home. The church can't help you. Bible school can't help you. It's not meant for you. And Eva Roberts got home. And he went back to his home church. He begged his pastor, can I please preach in church this week? From the story, he wasn't even asking for Sunday. Can I please minister to the people? Something was burning. You know, when it is burning inside you, you will find where to explode it. It was burning inside him. The pastor said, you are too small. You are too young. No, we can't give you room. But we can give you space somewhere in the church to meet with youths. Hear me. The Welsh revival took flight on the shoulders of young men. From the age of 15 to 22, they blasted in prayer. They blasted in repentance. And, and the whole fire spread across in months. Why do I mention Evan Roberts? Who I love so much and can't wait to meet with him in heaven. Why do I love him? He had a four point sermon. Four point. Every message he preached was on four pillars. Number one. Confess and repent of all sin. Number two, remove every questionable thing from your life. And you and I know we have them. Number three, promptly obey the Holy Spirit. Doing whatever he tells you to do. And number four, publicly confess your sin. Or publicly confess Christ as Savior. One, confess and repent of all sin. Two, remove all questionable things from your life. Three, promptly obey the Holy Spirit, doing whatever he tells you to do. Four, publicly confess Christ as Savior. It was said about Van Roberts that they will pray even if it takes hours till the Holy Spirit says, this is the word. That's why you saw how, how powerfully the, the choir led us in that realm. We will never move until you lead the way. We will never go until we know you are in. That's Evan Robertson's song. We will make no decision until we know you are in. How many of us pray like that to decide who to marry? Pray like that to decide which school to go. Pray like that to decide which. I mean, we are just leading ourselves. And calling God to help us when we are in danger. When the Lord is your shepherd, you will not want. When the heart of man begins to pant or seek God in genuine repentance, then that is a revival has happened. Number two, a revival is set to occur when people become baptized in the spirit of grace and supplication. The spirit of grace and supplication. This is what, this is what, uh, Evan Roberts carried. We call it travail and intercession. Travail and intercession. When this spirit hits you, every loose moment is a prayer moment. When this spirit hits a man, hear me. Even when you are talking with him, times will come that he's not listening to you. He's connecting with heaven and heaven matters more than you. The spirit of travail. Zechariah chapter 12 verse 10. Many of you know that. Verse 10 to 14. He will pour upon the house of David. Are we ready for it? You can get in the envy and before you know it, religious mania has hit you. Nenosos kanano shaba. Retequetesia. Banane no no sananana. Rakatando shagagagaga. Retepea no sada. Are we ready for it at all? Because a revival cannot be said to occur until People are baptized in prayer. And you and I know we don't have it yet. I don't want, the, the baptism of the spirit of grace and supplication is not 30 minutes prayer. 
It's not five minutes in church prayer. No. You pray, you look. Ah, one hour gone. You pray, you look. Two hours gone. You, you are groaning, 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 groaning. The spirit of prayer, of grace and supplication. Shall a nation be born at once? But as soon as Zion traveled. So you can't talk about revival without traveling. It is this heat of prayer. This heat of prayer that brings and sustains every revival. I have an illustration for you. And I just looked at the time. The time is almost gone. Pastor Sama, if you, if you have it, quickly bring it out. There's a technology that has been out there for many years, many years. It's, for me, it is one of the best descriptions of what this spirit does upon a man. Because hear this. Until we begin to glow, we can't see the glory. It is glowing men that attract the glory. Glowing men. And you can't glow without groaning. So it is from groaning to glowing to glory. Ay, 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 ay. Pray in the spirit right now. Wherever you are. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Latosh kada. Rana nenos. Put it here. Nenos kana. Nekepia da da da. Zenunos. Do you know a message can be going on and you are praying? Nenos kanane shaga. Retepia no no no. Zanane nenene kandos karada. Lenono sala. All eyes focus here now. And watch this. Which one is the cup? Okay. What color is this? Black. And I'm, I'm not sure I even knew you, you got the black color, but how significant that is. Now, what is this? What kind of water? Hot water. Now, focus on this. All eyes here. Nenos kana, nemrana nenonos, nekea nana, from black to white. By the introduction of heat. Ay, 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 ay. How colorful your destiny and my destiny is if heat is included. Nanos ifrakate kush kandimbraniano no nekiana. Look at that. Now, let's pour it out. So, the fire has stopped because the month has ended. And now, where we have repented of our wrong, we have returned back. Let's see if anything happens. And I hope you try this. How long will it take? How long? Do you know? Okay. Look at it. Look at it. Gradually so. Gradually so. Gradually so. Gradually so. All the beauty around is disappearing. Gradually so. Gradually so. Gradually so. Gradually so. Gradually so. Gradually so. And now pitch black. And so if you go to Azusa Street now in Los Angeles, it is a parking lot. With a sign, one sign, small sign in the ground showing Azusa Street used to be here. Gradually so. No, we are not perfect, but keep the fire. Keep it. Nanos kananea shalabarande nenea. You discover you are returning. Take a break. Take a retreat. Ano nenonos 
agagateke ratasi kata vivian brandenus kanana shaga if not like that cup everyone light table is dimmable make your choice thank you sir take take it out what is in a revival for us one everlasting mountains cleared away in a revival everlasting mountains mountains that pass from you from your parents to you they give way and that, that's what they call everlasting not current mountains there are things you and I struggle with that didn't begin with us but in a revival everlasting mountains cleared away you'll find that in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 to 6 the sea saw it, it fled. Psalm 114, verse 1 to 8. What is in a revival for us? Number two, supernatural favor is unleashed in a revival. Favor everywhere. Acts 2, 47. Praising God and having favor with the people. Favor, favor everywhere. Favor spreads in a revival like wildfire. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. Favor everywhere. Now that is our covenant of restoration. What must we understand? Our restoration is the will of God. Shout with me, my restoration is the will of God. Shout it with fire. Shout it without doubt. Is the will of God. The will of God. The will of God. The will of God. And the will of God cannot be stopped. Jesus said, Let this cup pass over me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. It is the will of God that brought salvation. The same will of God guarantees restoration. Hear me. Whether the devil likes it or not, let all that partner with hell gather. You shall be restored. Yeah. Let me hear you scream that amen right now. Yeah. For the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, to destroy. But I am come that ye may have life, have life to the full. The Amplified says, until it begins to overflow. Restoration is a mission of the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is the chief executive officer that can never be replaced in any revival. Remove him, there is nothing revived. In Isaiah chapter 61 verse 7, for your shame, you shall have double. And for confusion, they shall rejoice in the portion. Therefore in their land, they will possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. That's the mission of the Holy Ghost if you keep reading from verse 1. To secure our restoration. Five things quickly. One, we must be born again. We must be born again. And I believe everyone already had that opportunity to make it right with God. We must be born again. For the wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus our Lord. Two, we must receive and believe the word of restoration. For as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Three, we must remain committed to serving God and the interest of his kingdom. And this great commission is a perfect example. In fact, we don't have things lost in this commission. It's one thing to have it lost. We don't even have it lost. Why? From the apostle over this commission, we are serving God and the interest of his kingdom. It is not the time in the world where churches even believe that God still wants to gather people in-house. Yet, our church back home is building a 109,000 seater with children's department of 20,000. I saw it this morning. I said, what? 20,000 children holding on to God's word because God never said he will move his people online. He said they will flow. They will flow. People now that have money to do projects for church, they are saying, let's calm down first. Let's see what will happen in the world. To know what we want to do that God's word said. But not us here. 
In 2 Chronicles chapter 15, verse 3 to 15, as they made a commitment to serve the Lord, he gave them rest round about. To secure our restoration, number four, we must be committed to praying for the well-being of others. Job 42, 10 to 14, as Job prayed for the well-being of his friends, it's amazing that what you pray for others is attracted to you. It's a kingdom mystery. Those who have their needs met don't pray about their needs. They pray about the kingdom one and then they pray about others next. Finally, number five, to secure our restoration, we need baptism in the Holy Ghost. This month must not pass. You, you should walk up to the pastor and say, I, I need to be baptized. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. Time will fail us to begin to call off everybody every time. Do you want to be baptized? No, it's a choice. It's a choice. You walk up and say, I must be filled with the Holy Spirit today. With the evidence of speaking in tongues. Else you are not going anywhere till I'm filled. I know you are not the filler, but you are the vessel. Desperation. In Joel chapter 2, verse 23 to 27. When the Holy Spirit breaks loose, one thing you will see is waves of restoration. So wherever you are, anytime you remember we desire a revival, burst out in the Holy Ghost. Anyway, you may be going home. Maybe you're about to eat. You just remember, ah, Lord, we need a revival. Just start praying. Don't wait till you have one hour or two hours. What I've observed about prayer, even if you have five minutes, pray it. Because it is that five minutes you think you only had that graduates to one hour. When people who want to see you come and they see you pray, they will, they, will, they will think themselves and leave. Meetings will be canceled on account of prayer. Don't let anything wait. If you have one dull moment, connect to heaven, praying in the spirit. Rise on your feet. In Jesus' name. Now, come on. Let's pray in the spirit right now. Come on, come on. Let's pray in the spirit. The time we're using to stand up is enough time to pray. Letosh kanana, reteskia vranenosa, nekiash kanama, ranamane, nekunanose, ranamahianush, garada. Yes, while some are taking time to stand up, let's pray. Nenokonosha, reketisam vraniano nono, nekoshaga, randes, kalabahande, roshkanaya. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'm glad I, wa I was in church. I'm, I'm glad that God stepped in here today. I'm glad. I'm glad. As a spectator, how many of us are spectators here today? Did we see God touch our hearts? Lift your hands and give him the praise. Be thou exalted, O Lord, above all heavens. Ha <laughs> ha. Be thou exalted, O Lord, above the earth. Let your glory be above all the earth. Let your glory be above. Pastors, you can move towards the communion. All the come on, be thou exalted, Lord. Be thou.
you the next one minute. Any area where you desire restoration, ask for it right now. If you can't articulate it in English, pray in the language of the Spirit. Don't take the communion yet till you pray. Articulate the areas where you desire restoration. Right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Nenos kanana, nemranianana, restoration of spiritual fire, fervency. Nekunos aneria, nekete, reactivation of gifts of the spirit. Nenosane karane, jaja nekuna, jeklembra, nenosane, anekenine, narunamo, nekrononosa, nekenia, 30 more seconds. Ranamaniano, nekunonos, restoration of revival in this generation. Nana nene, nana nana, nekononosa, nerene, nerene na maniano, nekonano shalabaha, renebeano sha, furutosia, beniano no no, sangranino, nemononosa, reketeniana na, ranamaniana na, restoration of righteousness, restoration of holiness, ranenono sange, rananea, naniana nana, nerene, neskonono shalabaha. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. All right? These elements in your hand and my hand is now declared as the blood and the flesh of Jesus as we partake of it. Because his primary mission was to restore us back to the Father. As we partake of this table today, every issue that desires the restoration of the Master the restoration of the Spirit of God, the restoration of our Heavenly Father. I decree every such issue in your life and my life, as we partake of this communion, I decree they are restored. Yeah. Health is restored. Yeah. I, uh, no, 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 that's wrong. First, we begin with our spirit. Spiritual fire is restored. Spiritual fervency is restored. Gifts of the Spirit restored. Accuracy of declaration restored. Revelation restored. Now to your body, every issue of sickness, the sickness is over now. Your health is restored. Ay, 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 that's right. Your joy is restored. Your peace is restored. Your happiness is restored. Everything the enemy has stolen from you by this table today, on this covenant of restoration, I decree speedy restoration. In Jesus' precious name. And let me hear the loudest amen. And that's right. Take your seat. Partake of the table right now. Take your seat, please. Wow. I'm sure you were blessed by this video that you just watched. The truth is this. Without action, revelation is impotent. And so what will you do having heard the things you have heard? I'm sure something has been fired into your spirit. It's now time to take action. Make sure you like, you subscribe, you comment, and you share this video with everyone. Let's spread the fire across the nations of the earth because we will see a revival in our generation. God bless you.